Hi there, I'm Marcy Billen with Reed Team Realty and Keller Williams Bullenix. And today I want to go over what some of these closing costs are that you might find if you're buying a house or selling a house. Like I said, I'm Marcy Billen and I'm a real estate agent here in Norman, Oklahoma. Have you subscribed to our channel? Okay, so I understand this isn't the most exciting of topics. However, you probably want to have some questions answered about why there are certain costs whenever you're purchasing a house. So I'm going to run through these. These are not for a specific house or a specific person. This is a fictional house that I have priced at $200,000. And I'm also doing an estimate only for an FHA loan. So why am I doing that? Well, FHA is a little bit more complicated than let's say a conventional loan. So if you're watching this and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm getting a conventional loan, so it's not the same. A lot of these costs actually will be the same. It's just I wanted to make sure I covered that FHA loan. I'm also going to go over the seller's costs directly after the buyer's costs. I think it's really important for sellers to know what the buyers are paying for in their closing costs, especially because a lot of times sellers will end up paying the buyer's closing costs. I'm not covering any of that though, like those negotiations for sellers covering buyers closing costs or even the other way around, which in some markets does happen. So if you need more information on that, I would watch this video next. Okay, so I'm going to run through these items on this home estimate that you see here. Now, I use home estimates typically from this company, which is Chicago Title. It doesn't mean that every company is the same. Different title companies are different. However, this outlines a kind of overview of what these buyer's costs are. I like this one a lot because it gives you this total amount I bring to close here at the top. And it also gives you an estimated monthly payment. Now, when a realtor gives you an estimate like this, it is just that. It is an estimate. We are not your lender. We do not have those different costs that your individual lender may have. And if you have questions about your specific loan, you need to talk to your lender. So at the top here, we see, you know, this house price being $200,000, which is our fictional house. And then you'll see what that down payment would be at um, three and a half percent, which is your minimum down payment on an FHA. And that's $7,000 on this house, which means you'll be getting a loan for $193,000. This next line, MIP, what is that? That is mortgage insurance premium. So you have to have mortgage insurance on your loan if you're putting down less than 20%. So that's what this is. And they're rolling it into your loan. Total loan, of course, 196, 377, That's the 193 plus the 337750 that we see with the loan plus the MIP. Then next we have the APR. So the APR actually reflect, reflects the mortgage interest rate plus other charges. And if you're like, Marcy, you're not totally answering all of these questions. Like, what is this? What is this? Like, I, I totally understand. I'm trying to give you an overview of what's going on with a specific loan. So that way you're not walking into this blind. I wouldn't want you as my client to, you know, go under contract for a house and just have no understanding of what any of this stuff is. So I think it's really good to get an overview before you start putting offers in on a house. Moving on to monthly payment info right here, right? So here we have your principal and interest, monthly payment, principal and interest, homeowner's insurance. So that like I said, this is a fictional house. So this is based off of a percentage used in these calculations. So typically yours is going to be lower. And then monthly property tax. So you have to pay property taxes on your house and they put those into your escrow account so that the city can take them out and you know everything can get paid in December. In Oklahoma, we pay our property taxes in arrears, meaning that let's say, you know, if you're buying a house in 2021, then the property taxes for 2021 are due in December of 2021. And you cannot give the city any money before that point. Next thing is this mortgage insurance. We have that here at 136. This mortgage insurance premium, this is going to be different for every loan. It depends on your credit score and it depends on the loan product itself. So like I said, this one's for an FHA and this is an estimate. 
Next up, we have an HOA. So I, I put that this particular fictional property has a $210 HOA uh, bill you know, per year. Typically you pay this out like all at once, $210, not putting it on your monthly payment, but it's here on the monthly payment. All right, so moving up here to prepaid costs. So on our prepaid costs, these are a few different things, right? So the first thing we have is this 14 months of homeowners insurance. So $3,500, that's gonna go, that's a full year, you know, premium paid on your house for your, your homeowners insurance. Plus the lender needs a little cushion, right? They need, they're allowed to have, you know, two months of cushion in your months of insurance. And another thing that a lot of people don't understand. So let's say you're, you know, purchasing a house in October, right? You close on the house October 15th. Cool. Great. Your first mortgage payment is not actually due until December. So that means that, you know, you have a little time where you're, you need to have some uh, insurance in your escrow account so that, you know, those bills can be paid because your next bill isn't coming up for a couple of months but you still have to have homeowner's insurance. The next thing we have here, oh, we have taxes, sorry. I almost forgot the taxes. You have to have four months of taxes in your escrow account as well whenever you close on the house. And this is always dependent on the time of the year because like I said, we can't give the government any money before December in Oklahoma because we pay in arrears. So um, you don't have as much time to make up for your December payment if you're starting in October. But if you're starting in February, you have a lot of time um, to get that payment in place through your escrow account and through your mortgage that you're paying every single month because your mortgage, insurance, and your taxes are all rolled into one bill. This 30 days of interest, what is this? Well, you're when you're paying your mortgage, you're paying interest, right? So you're actually paying interest for the previous month. So you have to have 30 days of interest because like I said, if you're closing in October, your first mortgage payment is not due until December. So in December, you in December, you're paying for your mortgage, your interest from November. So that means that your October needs to be paid as well, depending on when you closed. So that number is gonna be different too because you're paying the previous month's interest. All right, so this next line is your total prepaid cost. Like I said, this is an estimate. This is for a fictional house. And I think I have the closing date on here to be like November 12th or something like that. So I like this first page a lot here because we have the closing costs and it has your fixed costs outlined here and then your prepaid costs. They're adding that together to get your total closing costs and your down payment in order to come to this amount here, which is your bring to close amount. So that means the money that you need to bring to the closing table in order, in order to close in your house. There's a lot of different ways that this can change. Like I said, this is an estimate. This next page, this is a two page document for this FHA buyer cost estimate. So we have some title fees outlined on page two. These title fees can be a little bit different company to company. Like I said, this is Chicago title of Oklahoma. The first line here is the title policy. Your title policy covers your title and any sort of encroachments that you know might come onto the land. That's something that you can put in a claim. Like let's say your neighbor, you know, accidentally built a fence on your property, you would actually put in a claim with your title insurance and they would help you take care of that. So this covers any need that you may have to cure your title or help your title become clear. All right, next is this closing fee. What is that? Well, that's actually the time you're paying for the time that the closer, the actual person, is spending at the closing table with you in order to close your house. Next is this attorney's exam. So an attorney always has to look at title in order to compile a list of things that need to be done in order to make it a clear title so that the property can change hands. And they have to have this also for title insurance. This next one is gap coverage. This varies um, company to company, and you may not even have this on yours if you're not using this title company, but it may be called something else too. So this settlement service fee, this is for uh, making sure that things are you know, secure for you, meaning like any secure documents that have to be sent over, the systems that they use in order to do that, FedEx, couriers, anything like that. 
The closing protection letter is actually something that your lender needs from the title company saying that your title is free and clear so that um, the title can change hands and there's nothing wrong with it. Next is miscellaneous lender fees. So what is that? What are we looking at here? We have a pest inspection of $100. We put the pest inspection on our cost estimates because most likely you're going to pay for, you know, someone to come out and make sure you don't have any termites in the house. Also, you're going to have a survey. So the survey is something that the title company pulls for you from the county so that you can see where easements are, where setback lines are, all that kind of stuff for your house. And then you have miscellaneous lender fees. So this amount here, this $800, which is, you know, different for each lender, but a big portion of this is going to be your appraisal costs. Appraisals are typically around $500. And obviously this is $800. So you're going to have some other things in there too, like verifications and also flood certs to make sure your house isn't in a flood zone, or if it is that you're taking into account flood insurance. Other fees. So first thing we have here, this is mortgage tax. So this is a tax that goes to the county and the way that they figure this out is 0.01% plus $5. So it's always different on every single one. We have recording fees. So these can change a little bit as well, but they, they really shouldn't. So um, these are for the county. You have a certain amount for the first page of documents that you need recorded. Plus, um, each page after that is a certain amount as well. So you have a regular recording fee for paper and the e-recording fee for online stuff. Okay, so we're going to move on to the seller's costs. Sellers have a much shorter list of things that they have to pay for. So let's take a look at that. Okay, here is the seller's net sheet. So we call the buyer sheet a buyer cost sheet because, of course, buyers are spending money in the house. And the seller net sheet is how much they're going to net at the closing table. You see, I have the closing date here for November 19th. We have a sales price of $200,000, same fictional house. And then we have closing costs totaling $13,201.08. And then a balance of 50,000. Now I put this balance is in here because this fictional seller that I have has a loan on the house and they owe $50,000. So that means that they're going to net at close $134,723.25. So let's see how we got there. So you're also going to have prorated taxes. So since this one's in November, this prorated tax is, like I said, fictional house. So it's not, you know, a particular one. This is based off of a percentage. Typically yours is going to be a little bit less, but maybe not. And then that's how we come to the net to close. So how did we get here? How did we get to this net? And this is just showing you that it is going to cost you money in order to sell your house, right? So we have these fixed closing costs, title fees. So you're going to have that closing fee. The closing fee is the table fee, meaning that the time that the closer spends with you at the table. You're going to have abstracting. Now, um, the buyer pays for title insurance, but you as a seller own your abstract. Abstracting is a compilation, a compilation of anything ever filed against the property or the owner. So it's a big book of papers. In Oklahoma, it's a big book of papers. Other states aren't quite like this. Um, we're one of the last abstracting states in the U.S. And we have the settlement service fee. So that is, you know, going to be the things that I kind of covered in the buyer costs. So maybe some FedEx needs or couriers or maybe even, you know, sending secure documents over the Internet. Other fees that the seller has to pay for. You have doc stamps. Doc stamps are taxes and they are filed with the county. The way that they figure this out is 0.75% of the sales price and that goes to the county. That's just the law and it's actually in the contracts. And the recording fees, we have two of them here, one for regular recording and one for e-recording. This um, varies because of how many papers need to be recorded for different things with the county. And of course, a big cost that you're going to see on here, this is a realtor fee. So we have buyer's broker fee and listing broker fee. So each one of these is $6,000. This is not a set price in Oklahoma at all. This is a percentage and this is the one that I used to do this seller net sheet. Then we have our total fixed cost of $13,201.08. And 
And that's where this number is for closing costs. And then you have your prorated taxes and that's how we get to our seller net at close. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have more questions, you can find my information below. And also you may wanna watch this video next.